One of the most terrifying things that can happen is for a loved one to go missing. In a way, it can be even worse than an unexpected death because as the years go by, there's no way to find closure, just an increasingly diminishing hope that they might return. Most people who go missing do show up again soon, but once the years go by, the mystery deepens and the chances become slim. But never zero as these people prove. From the little girl found adrift in the ocean to the man who showed up after seven years, here's 20 missing people who were eventually found. <sighs> Number 20. Terry Jo Duperalt. When an 11-year-old girl was found alone, sunburned, and close to dying in the middle of the ocean, floating on a dinghy, her rescuers didn't know what to do. In 1961, this little girl was found adrift at sea. Decades later, she revealed the heartbreaking truth. In truth, Terry Jo Duperalp shouldn't have been alive at all because she had severe sunstroke, was very thirsty, and her life raft was falling apart around her. Terry Jo's trip began in a pretty normal way. Her parents, Arthur and Jean, took their three kids, Brian, Terry Jo, and Renee, on a family trip on a yacht called the Bluebell from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to the Bahamas. Arthur's friend, Julian Harvey, and his wife, Mary Denna, also went on the trip. Harvey was the ship's captain. That all sounds pretty good so far. And it was, until the fifth night, Terry Jo woke up to the sound of screams coming from the deck above her cabin. She went upstairs to see what was going on. When she got there, she saw her mother and brother lying on the floor covered in blood. Then Harvey came up to her, and when she asked what was going on, he told her that the boat was sinking. He gave her a rope that led to the emergency dinghy, but it slipped away from her. She remembers seeing the dinghy drift away from the bluebell as it sank. Harvey jumped into the water to get the dinghy, and Terry Jo never saw him again. Terry Jo remembered all of a sudden that there was a small life raft in the main cabin, so she took it, knowing it was her only hope. Three long, agonizing days at sea, all alone, without food or water followed. But on the fourth day, a miracle happened. A Greek ship spotted her. Harvey also lived. He told authorities he was the only survivor from a boat wreck, but when he heard that Terry Joe had been found, he killed himself. It turned out that he had killed his wife and everyone on board except for this one young girl to get the wife's life insurance money. Terry Joe remained silent for many years, but as an adult was able to recount the awful event and her subsequent miraculous survival. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Timothy Carney. In September of 2011, a man who had been missing since 2004 was found safe and sound to the surprise of everyone. But it turned out Timothy Carney might not have been missing at all. Carney's family says that his roommate Roy Anthony last saw him at their Butler Ridge apartment on September 28th of 2004. At the time, Carney was 25 years old. Carney called his boss to say he was going to be late for work. After that, no one heard from him again. His car was left on the side of the road near Newark. Carney's parents, Phyllis and Ed spent years looking for their son. With the help of the Kristen Foundation, a national group that works to find missing people, they put up signs on Route 23 saying that Carney was missing and giving a phone number for anyone who saw him to call. Carney's parents were told in 2011 that he had finally been found. And the case for a missing person, which had been opened by the Missing Persons Unit of the Morris County Prosecutor's Office, has since been closed. Carney's family thinks he's living in Chicago right now, but that they don't know why he hasn't talked to them for so long. Even though it seems like Carney may have chosen not to talk to his family, the family aren't upset that they've been looking for him for so long, only to discover he didn't want contact with them. They're just happy that he's safe. Number 18. Robert McDonough. In Maine, back in 2013, a 73-year-old man with dementia went missing. He was found 14 hours later when he walked right up to a news crew that was right in the middle of covering his disappearance live on TV. Reporter Norm Carcos from ABC affiliate WMTV in Portland was live on air when Robert McDonough started walking towards the news crew and just appeared in the background of the shot. When McDonough saw Carcos standing outside his house, he asked him what was going on. Carcos knew right away that McDonough was the missing elderly man from Limington. He called the main ward and service, which is the main search and rescue agency in Maine. One of McDonough's family members said McDonough was doing well and only had a few scrapes. 
The bigger problem though is that McDonough doesn't know where he went or why he got lost, and his family's worried that he might go missing again. This is definitely one that could have been a sad tale, but in the end, it turned out great. Number 17. Jan Broberg When Jan Broberg was nine, her close, religious, and loving family in Pocatello, Idaho became friends with another family the Berktolts. Both families' fathers were named Bob, and they were leaders in their local groups of Church of Latter-day Saints, aka the Mormons. Bob Berktold asked the Brobergs to call him B, so nothing would get mixed up. Both sets of parents liked picnics, talent shows, music, and arts and crafts. B was known as a fun dad because he'd take the Broberg girls and his own kids out for ice cream and tell them crazy stories about UFOs and aliens. Then, when Jan was 12, B kidnapped her and began brainwashing her. Before she turned 14, he had sexually assaulted her more than 200 times. According to Broberg's own memoir, he was also able to seduce her mother and get her father to perform sexual acts for him. In 2019, a Netflix documentary called Abducted in Plain Sight told the story of how the Brobergs were manipulated by Berktold, a charismatic sociopath who never spent more than a year in prison, even though he admitted to kidnapping Jan and was later found guilty of abusing another child. This is a pretty dark story, and it shows how sociopaths can pay on the vulnerable in our society. Number 16. Petra Pazitka in 2015, a German woman who had been missing for more than 30 years and was thought to have been murdered was found alive and well in Dusseldorf. When Petra Pazitka, a 24-year-old student in Braunschweig, Germany, didn't show up to her brother's birthday party in 1984, her family knew something was wrong. This led to a huge police search. In 1985, a person who was convicted of abusing and killing a 14-year-old girl from the same area admitted to killing Pazitka but her body was never found. The cold case was officially closed in 1989, but in 2019, when police in Dusseldorf were called in to a report of a break-in, it started to warm up again. When she called in the burglary, the woman said she was Mrs. Schneider, but when asked for ID, she admitted that she was really the missing Petra Pazitka. Pazitka told police that she had been living in Germany for the past 30 years under a false name and without any official papers. Pazitka wouldn't explain why she was living under a fake name or why she went missing in the first place. All she would say was that family problems weren't the reason she went missing. Pazitka also made it clear to the police that she doesn't want to talk to her family or the public. A very mysterious case to say the least but her family at least knows she's alive and well after all those years. Number 15. Julian Hernandez Julian Hernandez was just five years old when his mother reported him missing in August of 2002. Thirteen years later, he was found safe and sound in Cleveland, Ohio. Bobby Hernandez, Julian's father, was taken into custody and charged with his disappearance. The FBI says that neither Julian nor his father used their real names. Police in Alabama had gotten hundreds of leads from all over the country and the world, but none of them led anywhere in the search for Julian. His case was a real mystery, and some people even suspected human trafficking or murder. Bobby Hernandez, Julian's father, was arrested and charged by the Cuyahoga County Court in connection with Julian's disappearance. In Ohio, he was also charged with aggravated identity theft, which is a Class C felony. In Alabama, he was charged with custody interference. Julian's mother and father were living together at the time that he went missing. His mother had asked Bobby Hernandez to watch Julian for a short time, but when she came home, he and Julian were gone, and she didn't see him again until he was an 18-year-old man. Number 14. Steve Carter Steve Carter was looking around online one day when he came across a website for lost children. After going through the pages, he was shocked to find something very strange on there, himself. What happened next was a year-long story of coming to know his real self. Carter, who is a 35-year-old and a software salesman, was adopted from an orphanage in Honolulu when he was four years old. When the Philadelphia man grew up, got married, and thought about having his own kids, he became more interested in where he came from. On a hunch, he went to missingkids.com in hopes of finding out more about where he came from. There, 
he found a picture of himself generated from a picture of him when he was a baby, showing what he might look like today. And it really did look like him. Carter said that he knew it was him right away and called the Honolulu Police Department. Then in February of 2011, Carter agreed to take a DNA test. Eight months later, what it found showed pieces of his story in his birth name, which was Mark's Panama Moriarty Barnes. Mark Barnes, his real father, reported him missing more than 30 years ago when his mother Charlotte Moriarty took him for a walk and didn't come back. It was a very interesting, uh, it was a very interesting day. Carter says he thinks his biological mother Charlotte put him in the orphanage in Hawaii and gave the authorities the name Tenzin Amiya. I couldn't help but think if I was Steve, I'd be happy that out of all of those names, I went ahead and used Steve. Carter says that he wants to meet his family someday, but he also wants to find out what happened in the three weeks between the time he was said to have gone missing and when he arrived at the orphanage in Hawaii. Number 13, Denise Bolser. Denise Bolser was last seen at her home in Raymond, New Hampshire on January 17th of 1985. She lived in the house with her ex-husband, and when he came home, he found a note with footprints in the snow that said, we've got your wife. Denise could not be found anywhere. Authorities looked into the idea that she might have been kidnapped and possibly killed, but they could only find the anonymous note. Later, they came to think that maybe she had left on her own, but her family, who was very close to her, thought something was wrong. In 1986, she was charged with some financial crimes and abstentia. This made police think that she may have left on her own to avoid criminal charges. Denise was charged with embezzlement, but the charges were dropped in 1993. Over the years, her family Emily kept hoping that she would get in touch. In 2002, a private investigator gave the police a good lead about a woman named Denise who lived in Florida and had the same birthday as Denise Bolser. The police followed the lead and they finally found Denise Bolser in Panama City, Florida on May 13th of 2002. She was living there under the name Denise James. She had made a new family and they didn't know anything about her past. Denise said that she had run away because her former boss had threatened her life. She also said that she had lived in the Bahamas, California, South Carolina, and Hawaii during the 17 years she was missing. Denise then had a tearful reunion with her old family. Number 12, Amanda Eller. On May 8th of 2019, Amanda Eller, a physical therapist from Maui, was seen in the Makawao Forest Reserve. After about 17 days, a veteran helicopter pilot named Pete Voorhees found her alive, exhausted, with minor injuries, but mostly healthy. The Eller case was one of the most talked about things to happen on Maui in recent years. It was the focus of a mystery episode on a network TV show. At first, people wondered who lived on the island, whether Eller had been taken away by someone or if something bad had happened to their unusually safe backyard. Eller claims that she simply went out for a jog, meditated, fell asleep on a log, and then got lost. Eller went further into the forest because she thought she was going back out towards her car. She later told the media that she drank water from a stream, lost a shoe in a flash flood, ate moths, berries, and other animals in the forest, and slept in a boar's den. Some people have questioned some of the details of this story. Even though there's still a lot of questions, Voris said he has one answer. The pilot found Eller's missing shoe about 100 feet from where she was seen, near a river at the top of the waterfall in Kailua, about five to seven miles from where she started, suggesting her story about the flood was the truth. Well, it just goes to show, be careful out in the woods, folks. One wrong turn, and things could become tricky quickly. Number 11, Steven Stainer. Steven Stainer was a child abduction victim from the United States. Stainer, who was seven years old at the time, was taken from Merced, California on December 4th of 1972 by a child molester named Kenneth Parnell. He was held by his kidnapper 38 miles away in Mariposa County, California, and then in Mendocino County, California, until he was 14 and finally escaped along with another of Parnell's victims, Timothy White. Stainer believed Parnell was his father, and the two of them moved around California a lot, living in places like Santa Rosa and Campachi. As Stainer got older, Parnell started looking for a younger child to abduct and abuse. Parnell had tried to 
had kidnapped children before with the help of Stainer, but none of these attempts were successful. Stainer later said that he had made sure these kidnappings failed on purpose. Timothy White, who was five years old, was taken from his home in Ukiah on February 14th of 1980 by Parnell and Randall Sheen Poorman, a teenage friend of Stainer's. Stainer decided to get the boy back to his parents because he could see how upset the boy was. While Parnell was at his night job as a security guard on March 1st of 1980, Stainer and White left Parnell's home and hitched a ride to Ukiah. They went to a police station when they couldn't find White's parents' house. By the time the sun came up on March 2nd of 1980, Parnell had been taken into custody on suspicion of kidnapping both boys. Stainer was free at last, but tragically died in 1989 when he was riding his motorcycle home from work and got into an accident. Another morbidly interesting fact, Carrie Stainer, who's a notorious serial killer on death row, is Stephen Stainer's older brother. Make no mistake, this family has been through some difficult times. Number 10. Boy missing found on roof of home by reporter covering his story in a helicopter. Back in 2017, a young boy of 11 had been reported missing by his parents, only to be found peacefully sleeping on the roof of his house. The two-hour search ended when a news helicopter from a local TV network saw the boy dozing off on his Miami home's roof tiles. We spotted the child, reporter Ralph Rayburn radioed to his assignment desk. He's on the roof of his house. Police were searching the area when they saw the child sleeping on a tarp. Rayburn said to his co-workers, he appears to be in good shape. Rayburn Burns' co-workers told the police where the boy was by calling them. The journalist in the helicopter said that he was shocked to see the child as he flew over the house. He couldn't believe it at first. Am I seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, is that him? That's the kid on the roof. On the roof. That's the kid. Officers helped the boy come down from where he had been hiding. So you may be asking yourself, why did he run away? He hated summer camp, and he didn't want to go. I didn't mean to cause any trouble, he said. I didn't mean to waste any of the police officer's time. I just do the stupidest thing sometimes. Number 9. Lula Cora Hood in 1970, Grace Kivisto's mother left her family in Illinois because of an argument. She never saw them again. But 15 years after a body was found in a brickyard in Illinois and was thought to be hers, police work and the internet led them to 84-year-old Lula Cora Hood in Jacksonville, some 1,100 miles away. She was still alive and well. Hood has had problems with her mental health, so police and her family didn't want reporters to contact her because it could make her feel overwhelmed. But when Sergeant Sergeant Jackson Landers called a Jacksonville phone number and spoke to a woman who knew the right answers to his questions. He felt happy that he could finally say he found her. The family had looked for her for years, but they couldn't find a single lead. When a skeleton was found in an empty brickyard in East Galesburg, Illinois in 1996, her family and the police thought that it might be her. But now the happy news has turned everything around again. Grace Cavisto said that she's talked to her mother a lot since the discovery. She said that they talk like old friends, but Hood only has a few memories of the family before 1970. But that still doesn't answer one question. Whose bones were found in 1996? Number 8. Charlie Bothwell. The disappearance of Charles Bothwell V, a child from Detroit, was a controversial case. In 2014, he was found locked up in the basement of his family's home. Charles Bothwell IV, his father, and Monique Dillard Bothell, his stepmother, were charged with torturing and abusing children. Bothwell IV took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to fourth-degree child abuse in 2016. Bothwell IV and Dillard Bothwell reported that their son, Bothwell V, was missing in the beginning of 2014. Bothwell V was found in the family's basement, hidden behind boxes, 11 days after they reported him missing. Bothwell IV found out that his son had been found while he was being interviewed by Nancy Grace on live TV. This video went viral on YouTube. The couple was arrested in April of 2015 and charged with second-degree child abuse and torture. The court later threw out the torture charge, which, if true, could have led to a life sentence. But these parents certainly have some serious questions to answer. Number 7. Gabrielle Nagy Gabrielle Nagy's amazing story begins on January 21st of 1987. 
the dad of Jennifer, 9, and Stephen, 11, called his wife Pamela to let her know that he'd be home for lunch. But he never showed up, and his burned out car was found on the side of the road the next day. The family gave up the search and left their home in Sydney and moved to the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Pamela made sure that her number was always in the phone book in case he ever wanted to call, but they soon came to believe he was dead. However, senior constable Georgia Robinson found a clue more than 20 years later, just two weeks before an inquest would have declared he was legally dead. Robinson, who'd been looking for the former Sydney man for 10 years, did one last search before the coroner's court hearing and found a Medicare record in the name of Gabriel Nagy. He used to have a job, a nice home, and a family that he loved, but he couldn't remember any of it. He had completely lost his memory that fateful day. All he remembers is that he was bleeding heavily from a head wound. Scars on the back of his head remind him all the time of the injury he thinks caused him to lose his memory. But now he has answers to his questions about identity and also his family back with him again. Number 6. Michelle Whitaker Michelle Whitaker served her time in a South Carolina jail for driving drunk. She was arrested again, but was later let go. She was last seen in August of 2002, when she was dropped off at a truck stop in Spartanburg and tried to get a ride there. An anonymous letter sent to the police in August of 2005 said that she had been killed and that her body had been dumped in Landrum but this was never confirmed. Authorities think that a guy named Jonathan Vick may have had something to do with her disappearance, as well as the disappearance of Heather Sellers, who was his girlfriend at the time. In 2006, he was charged with killing Dana Satterfield in 1995 and he still is a suspect in two other killings. Jonathan was thought to have something to do with both Michelle and Heather going missing. However, he was innocent in one case for sure, because in 2008, Michelle was found alive and well in Oregon, which was a major surprise. A neighbor saw her picture on a website for missing people and thought it was her, sent a picture to the South Carolina police, and it turned out she was right. She was reunited with her family, and she told them that her troubled life before she disappeared made her unable to live with herself, so she moved to Oregon and started a new life. Number 5. Brenda Heist A woman from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, who went missing for 11 years after dropping her kids off at school and just never coming back home, was finally found in Florida in 2013. She traveled there with some homeless hitchhikers and slept under bridges, police reported. Authorities said that Brenda Heist turned herself in to police in Key Largo, Florida because she was sick. On February 8th of 2002, Heist left behind an 8-year-old daughter who's now a sophomore at Westchester University and a 12-year-old son who just graduated from Westchester and plans to go to a police academy in New Jersey. After Heist went missing, local, state, and federal authorities did a lot of work to find out what happened. In 2008, Heist's husband asked the Lancaster County Courts to make it official that she died. Once she got to Florida, she was homeless and lived under bridges and in tents, eating food that fast food restaurants threw away. Police said that Heist wasn't facing any charges, and it's all about reuniting her with her family after this sad time. Number 4. Flora Stevens this time, the cops found a woman who went missing in upstate New York more than 40 years ago. They discovered that she was living in an assisted living facility in Massachusetts. The Sullivan County Sheriff's Office said that Florence Flora Stevens went missing on August 3rd of 1975. She was 36 years old at the time. The missing woman was an employee at the Concord Hotel. Detectives looked into the case from time to time, but they were never able to find any leads. On September 15th, a New York State police investigator told the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office that a set of bones that could not be identified had been found in Southern Orange County. The woman whose body had been dumped looked a lot like Stevens, and the investigator was hoping that the DNA from any living relatives could be used to match the body to Stevens. Instead, police said that they found someone in Massachusetts that was using Stevens' social security number. By then, Stevens was 78 years old and was suffering from dementia, but police said she knew that her ID from the Concord Hotel was hers. Officials were able to find Stevens' medical records from about 30 years ago and found that she had spent time in a nursing home in New Hampshire and at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital in Manhattan. Because of her illness, no one knows how or why she left Monticello in 1975 or where she went. So this one remains a mystery, but her family are so happy to have found her. Number 3. Richard Landers 
A woman from Indiana whose young son was taken away by strange men 19 years before was screaming and jumping up and down when she found out that he was living in Minnesota under a different name. Indiana State Police said that Richard Landers Jr. was taken from Walcottville, a town about 30 miles north of Fort Wayne, in July of 1994. He and his paternal grandparents, who were upset about who had custody of Richard, had gone missing. Police said they were able to find Richard Lander about 100 miles northwest of Minneapolis by using his social security number. His grandparents were living under different names in a nearby town. Lander's mother, Lisa Harder, was jumping up and down for joy when investigators told her that her son had been found. She said she was the happiest woman on earth in that moment. Police said that Landers is married and his first child is on the way. Authorities thought the grandparents took the boy from their Wilcottville home and ran away, and they're soon facing charges for child abduction. Number two, Harold Lovell. Harold Wayne Lovell's family thought he was dead for 33 years when he didn't come home from a construction job. His late mother, Kathy Lovell, thought that when he was 19, her son had been killed by John Wayne Gacy, who was known as one of the most evil serial killers at the time. But in 2011, Lovell was found to be alive and well, so detectives with the Cook County Sheriff's Office were able to rule him out as one of the eight unidentified Gacy victims. Lovell said that he left home because of a family situation. He took a train to Florida because he couldn't stay around the house any longer. But finally, Lovell met up with his siblings in Alabama. He said that he had no idea that his family thought he was dead, and he was happy to be reunited. But Lovell said that he really did meet Gacy before he left Chicago, doing some yard work for him. Lovell says Gacy invited him inside, but he decided to decline, which probably saved his life. Number 1. Carlos de Salazar in 1996, Dr. Carlos Sanchez Ortez de Salazar disappeared without a trace from his home in Casala de la Sierra, Spain. His disappearance would be a major puzzle for a long time. It would be 20 years before some mushroom pickers in Italy made an unexpected discovery that would finally shed some light on the mystery. Two mushroom pickers found his camp on the Cala Violina Promontory in the nature reserve on the Marima coast in northern Tuscany. The hermit, who used to be a psychiatrist, lived in a tent and told the foreigners, I'm Spanish. My name is Carlos, and I've been here for 20 years. They said that he showed them his passport, but warned them that he'd leave now that they knew where he was hiding. After a month, Carlos's parents were found by a group in Spain that helps find people who have gone missing. His parents went to Italy right away to look for him, but a search has shown that he's since again disappeared without a trace, and no further sign of him has been found since. But his family say they're just happy to know he's alive, even if they are concerned about him still. What other missing people do you think might show up? Have you ever heard of someone who was found again after a long time of going missing? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up right now on screen. See you next time.